Hey guys, welcome back. It's Jeff Allen off the gridiron. Today I'm taking a walk in the back of my trailer park once again. And recently I've been inspired to, to look closer at some of the vegetation that I'm walking through to find out and educate myself about the edible wilds that uh, are often conceived as, you know, the average weed, but in fact carry more nutrition than some of the vegetables actually in the garden. So stay tuned, we're going to walk around and see what we can find. What I'm learning is that education, even the slightest bit of a certain topic of interest is certainly invaluable. In my recent uh, kind of, I guess, interest or passion about learning about the edible wilds it, it is allowing me to see my surroundings in nature altogether differently. When, when once before I would just kind of trudge through a trail uh, and just have the, the kind of objective or destination as my primary focus. Now, uh, as I'm walking, I'm able to kind of like, much like a department store maybe, and look around and see some of these, these, these edible wilds, these, these natural foods that I'm able to harvest. And just at a glance, I'm able to see so many uh, new possibilities that before didn't exist for me. Let me show you an example of what that is. The very spot I'm in right now, and once before I would see the objective as a path through the trees and uh, tracking, yeah, it was difficult to do. Maybe you can see some odd trails that have been stepped down perhaps by some, uh, some game. But in terms of edible wilds, I am surrounded by so many things. Right at my feet for starters, You've got your dandelions, okay? And the smaller the leaf, the uh, little more tasty. You've got the uh, kind of kind of red, purple clover, both leaf and uh, flower edible. Standing up from here, milkweed pods. And uh, they're getting a little on the large side, but uh, probably still acceptable this season. Further to that, We've got some, I think it's called uh, sorrel. I'll have to double check the name of this plant. I'll put that down below, but that's right there. And these leaf, these, uh, um, these pods are, are, uh, are edible as well. Pan up. We've got a bunch of different berries. We want to avoid those. There's an apple tree. I think I might go help myself to an apple tree, apple right now. And uh, over here, some wild, Raspberries, blackberries, perhaps. So these have all been uh, new kind of, kind of just visual cues for me that uh, I can better understand this, this natural environment. There's some goldenrod over there. Uh, that's edible as well. You can make that as a flower substitute. substitute. And uh, man, it just makes it so much more kind of inviting and uh you know with passions of mine including being on alone and going for for extended periods of time without uh, food understanding this this world of uh edibles in a now like a new environment you know it makes it really positive and really uh beneficial for me going further see uh nothing better than some wild apples nice and low slung 
check the wormholes. All good. Give them a little, uh, little wipe. Mm. Really tart, but uh, super refreshing. <clears throat> nice few bites. Certainly quenches the thirst on a hot, humid day like today. Let's see what else we can find. Still finished my apple. And this time of year is when you're going to find these. Wild grapes. And I've still got that tartness of that. I guess it was a crab apple. But uh, I'm really curious to see what these taste like. Definitely a seed in them. Oh man, so good. Definitely got a crunch. That refreshing mini grape flavor. Wow, this is awesome. Okay, let's press on. It's one of those things practice makes perfect and I forget what these are called. I'm going to have to check them out. I think I just saw them on YouTube this morning. Um, but definitely edible. And uh, we're going to see which one's nice and nice and green here. And again, with most edibles, the, the smaller they are, the more uh, kind of palatable they are. Hmm. Tastes green, <laughs> but uh, really, there is a little bit of a refreshing, almost lettuce, lettuce type flavor there. Nice and light. Um, we'll double check that uh, confirmation of that flower's name. Um, and I'll put in the uh, kind of link off to the side here. Looking around, I see some young, younger sumac. Sumac is uh, characterized by a very, uh, I call it a tropical, tropical appearance. But, um, and uh, the bark is um, kind of like velvet. It's got kind of that velvet texture. So some of the older sumacs, that are a little more established have red berry clusters on the top. Now those clusters, you can harvest those clusters and put them in a kind of like a it's just a cold water rinse and allow them to steep in the cold water. And they have a very lemony, very vitamin C rich uh, flavor. So that's something you can make is sumac lemonade. Super tasty. And super refreshing. And if you if you want to have a have a taste of what it could be like, just pull off one of those berries. Now it is uh, it is kind of fuzzy to the texture. But put one of those little one of those berries in your mouth, and you'll have an explosion of uh, kind of a sweet lemon flavor. Let's see if we can find some. It's such it's almost empowering to be able to walk through. Well, any environment, certainly environments that are not necessarily familiar to me, and be able to find these these edible wilds. I mean, that that knowledge is, has just escaped me for for years, and now it's here. It just it feels great. So here's the sumac I was talking about. <clears throat> okay, you can see these red berry clusters. And if you were just to sample. One of these little little berries. It's kind of obviously got that fuzzy feeling and texture to it, and there's a almost like a, a seed inside. There's not a lot of fruit around the outside, but if you allow these berries to steep in some uh, cold water, almost like a tea, uh, but not don't use hot water. That's 
that's uh, that's not advised. Cold water is what you want, and uh, you'll have a refreshing sumac lemonade. Let's press on and see what else we can find. Plant is called plantain. These leaves of uh, I've seen some better days. They're a little older. You want to get the the younger ones that come up through the middle. And plantain is uh, the leaves are super edible. So are the seed pods. And in fact, um, if you take even the larger leaves, chew it up and apply it to some kind of a wound, insect bite, for, for example, a sting, um, it relieves the sting and it has really great medicinal qualities to kind of skin lacerations and that sort of thing. Super good. Hi guys, thanks for joining me today on uh, Off the Gridiron. Bit of an ed edible wilds episode as I continue to educate myself and, and, and practice what other YouTubers have taught me about what's edible uh, in a natural environment. I'm really starting to see the natural environment and the, the uh, you know, the nature scapes that I walk through usually daily uh, in a totally different light, understanding what now is, is edible. And as I continue to learn, uh, I mean, I know there's some of you that were probably finding things and pointing things out in my video that I've, I walked over and through and, and still was not aware of their kind of edibility and their usability uh, in that regard. But uh, it's, it's certainly something that I'm uh, interested in as I uh, continue to educate myself and I hope you're doing the same. Uh, don't forget to click like, subscribe and share and uh, please at least uh, invite another friend to, uh, to, to follow my channel and uh, come on my journeys. Uh, each video. Till next time, it's Jeff Allen off the gridiron. Enjoy the outdoors. Enjoy your edible wilds. Bye bye.